Welcome to UCF Nightline, your source for UCF sports and former player information. Hello, Night Nation. This is Andrew Fegley coming to you from the 1148 Studios. This is episode number 78 of the UCF Nightline podcast. And guess what, guys? Speaking of guys, we have Jeff Sharon joining us from the Black and Gold Banneret. What's up? Podcast and website as well today. And Trace Trelko here. Hello, everyone. It is almost time for UCF football. Six days uh, away. You can smell it, right? I am, like, beside myself waiting. <laughs> I was watching a couple games over the weekend. There was the uh, Hawaii-Cal game, and then there was the NCSU and... Uh, North Dakota State and Charleston Southern. was. Uh, yeah. We're recording this on a, on a Sunday, so that was last night. That game went to night, overtime. Yep. That was an incredible game there. Uh, Just enough to whet our appetites. There's right? a yeah. chill in the uh, air. First frost is descending upon us. <laughs> If only it's about 90 degrees <laughs> it's gonna be, outside. Yeah. It's going to be very warm and humid, but <laughs> yeah. it's, it's dubbed first frost. September 3, South Carolina State at the Bright House, 7 finally, o'clock Eastern. Finally, finally, finally. I've waited like the entire off season for a week from yesterday. <laughs> for right now? Yeah. So, all right. Well, that's uh, that's what's going on. Jeff is in the studio with us next week for our live show. Kyle Israel will be in the studio with us which is very cool, for live uh, on the 4th on Sunday at 7 o'clock, live on Facebook, and we'll be talking about the game on the 3rd, and Kyle Israel will be here with us live. That'll be cool. Taking your phone calls. You guys can call in and talk to Kyle Israel and us. Yeah, he has yet to have an opportunity to break down a victory since he's joined us. Well, hopefully. <laughs> it can hopefully, only go up from here, right? Yeah, hopefully it will be a victory. That would uh, it would be bad if it if it wasn't, but I think it will be. So, Trace? Yeah, before we break down the uh, first depth chart, head coach Scott Frost has released. Uh, you know, Be sure to stay with us. We're going to be joined by a South Carolina State insider who is going to tell us who to keep an eye on for the Bulldogs. You know, a year ago, I was a little dismissive, right, of the opponent we were playing in that first game. Yeah. Furman. Look you how know, that turned ro- out. Rolled my eyes a little bit. Uh, you know, we've got uh, <laughs> one of those, what are they, F- B- FCS. FCS, a 1AA school. See, and I'm then, always going to call it 1AA. Yeah, so am I. So am I. But uh, we'll have him out, and he gives us an idea of some playmakers to watch. And, um, you know, you can't take anyone lightly, as UCF yeah. has uh, certainly found out. But So what about the depth chart? Any surprises uh, in your mind? Justin Holman, shocker, is the starting quarterback. My first thought about the the uh, depth chart is there is a lot of oars. <laughs> yes. And I'm right. not, we're not used to oars because o- O'Leary never did that. So this is that was the first thing that was kind of striking to me, like, like uh, for running back, Don Travius Wilson or Jawan Hamilton. So what do you so, take it to mean? He's <laughs> he's being coy, or they are still deciding who's going to be there, or we're just going to see everybody all the well, time. Well, one of those two is going to be the starter. I mean, well, for I, this game. Well, I think I mean, the way it works is like so the coaches sometimes refer to this part of the season as the preseason, and I think we're actually going to see it in the ref. You know, we see it as oh, well, it actually counts in your regular season record, of course, but it really is going to be treated like a preseason almost NFL game because this is the manifestation of the square peg in the round hole. We're taking George O'Leary's players and we're putting them in Scott Frost's offense. And so there are a lot. And so I think what Scott wants to do is find out which guys work with which units, who has adjusted to game speed the best. We're going to try out, you know, he's going to try out, say, um, Wilson with the ones on one possession, then Hamilton on the next possession, and see how they work in the blocking schemes, see how they work with the, you know, running the patterns out of the backfield, and then he'll have enough on film heading into Michigan to say, okay, this is the group of guys we're going to go with. Um, I think it's going to be, boy, I do not envy the coaches having to make these evaluations on the fly. I think you're going to see all four of those guys that are listed there anyway. I think, yeah. it's, I think it's funny, on, on all of these, it's a player or another player except a tight end. 
every one of those is uh, everyone's or, in play. Or, or, or right? Yeah, every every, every all one of those you, guys are going to be in play. Yeah, if you're South Carolina State, you're looking at this saying, "Oh my God, are they going to start 53 <laughs> guys on the field? How do we game plan against this? <laughs> they can only and, pick 11. You know, he wants to run 119 plays, Scott Frost. So good, good. that's the other thing South Carolina State well, is going to have to be prepared for. Even better, so he'll have a lot of he'll have a lot of data to pull from heading into Michigan. I hope their defense has been doing their cardio. We probably should have oh, asked yeah. that guy in our interview. We should have asked. We already did the interview. We pre, pre-taped it. But uh, we should have asked him if, if uh, South Carolina State has been doing their cardio, the defense especially, because they're going to need it. They to are keep up with. It. Well, they're not the only ones. The offense, too, I'm if you're just, running 119 plays. Well, yeah, I, but our guys <laughs> will be ready to do that, I believe. Yeah. And, and I'm just, I can't wait to see that. I can't wait to see the UCF fast whole the whole yeah. that whole deal it's I, i'm glad we're playing you know starting this against you know division one fcs opponent which you know don't don't sleep on south carolina State. certainly seven and four last yeah, year and they have a history of being a good uh, and a, FCS and a much program. better defense than people think that's the other thing too and in the matchup prior mind you right. a lot of different players ago but yeah. ucf struggled in that game a 17 nothing yeah. win uh at home and that I, was I was on the sideline for that game and we were looking and saying what what is the matter with us? Why can't we score points on this team? And it's because they had a pretty good defense, and that's their calling card. And I think we're going to hear from uh, our interview with the insider later about that. But, um, yeah, this is going to be a very, very interesting. I, I think it's going to be a lot of square peg and round hole stuff. It, it may look great at times, and, and it may look really awful at times because the players are still learning the system. And uh, back on Justin Holman, no surprise that he's the starting quarterback. Any surprise that listed as number two at the backup is Nick Patty. No, I'm not no. surprised at that. But I still think next year you will see, and if the, if there's any chance to get Mackenzie Milton in this year, I believe that they will do it. Do you yeah. think the season has gone way south if we see Mackenzie Milton? No, no, I don't. I think that that if what Scott Frost is seeing in practice, or we're so far ahead, or whatever that you that he could put Mackenzie Milton in there. I mean, if if he thinks that he's going to do something. You know, there's the whole issue of a red shirt. Yeah, I don't think he wants to burn that red shirt. But you never know. I mean, I, I don't know. If you can get him, this was a, a topic that was going on one of the the boards, a, a big discussion about it, how he could, you know, you might burn that red shirt just to get him some experience for next year, you know, before just throwing him out there yeah. as a red shirt freshman. And I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with that. You know, I don't, uh, I don't think Scott. Either is, way, he misses a, a year. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think Scott Frost has actually made that determination yet. I think it's, he's just going to have to see how the the plot of this season rolls out. You know, if all of a sudden we're challenging for a bowl game, I think he keeps him he keeps him under wraps. On the other hand, if we're you know four and seven, maybe he starts the last game. Who knows? I mean, it's. I'm I think just it's saying I will not be surprised whatsoever if you see him at some point during the season. Mark it yeah, down. I wouldn't mark be it. There you go. Mark There's a down. prediction. We'll see. Yeah. August twenty eighth. Yeah, August twenty eighth. There's the prediction. Three forty three p.m. Eastern. Now, if you've listened to the Nightline podcast, you know that a lot of Andrew's predictions <laughs> aren't always close. Do you guys keep these things recorded no, so you we, can go back and play I, the games? All of them. Yes. Last year, we were predicting each week's game, and then after each loss, about halfway through, we just said enough of this and because we, we were no longer picking UCF. We were just going. 52 to 7. But we what, were, it, it was no what fun was at all. the biggest prediction that I made, un- the biggest unfortunate prediction that I made about something that was going to happen to somebody if they kept on returning kicks last year? Oh, Do you remember that? Yeah. Yes, you and did. And it happened the next game after I said it. Yeah. yeah. Jordan Akins. Jordan Akins. He was listed said, as one of the oars. I said in this the, uh, is ridiculous group. that he should not be returning kickoffs back there because he's one of our most valuable wide receivers. This is stupid. I don't know why it's happening. He's going to get hurt. And then in the very the next, next game, game boom, it was uh, first it was, play of the game. It was uh, opening kickoff. Was it the Furman game? I think or it was. FIU. Was it? It was I FIU. It, so it, was it was FIU. It was okay, the second yeah, game. I remember yeah. watching it. It was, it was ridiculous. Yeah. And uh, at that position, kickoff return, they've got some mores uh, listed on the depth chart. Uh, Tristan Payton or uh, Neville Clark, or Adrian Killens. Uh, so, again, some decisions. Yeah. Now, I in not a position we don't have if... or on his punter, I think. If no, but, you know, also interesting on the kickers. ors. And there are several, but the kickers yeah, are all or still or listed as yeah. uh, a choice there really? between uh, Delahaye and, and uh, Matthew yeah. Wright. I would Both love to place see... kicking and uh, kickoffs. Hmm. I would love to see Adrian Killens return kickoffs. That dude is fast. Oh, yeah. I mean, like... High school champion. I th- believe that he has a high school, 
U.S. record. Shoot, just in, look him up some, on YouTube. Yeah, in one of the sprinting events in track and field, I believe that he has a high school American record. Yeah, so. just look him up on YouTube and make sure you pay attention because if you if you're not, you're going to miss him. He's that fast. Yeah, and he is not. When I saw him on media day out there at practice, I was really. He's listed at like five eight or something like that, and I was really expecting him to be small. He's not that small of a guy, though. Right. So he's very much. Uh, I keep going back to the same thing. He's 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 like our version of remember DeAnthony Thomas. Yeah. Uh, at Oregon, mm-hmm. that little little back who's super super fast. But when you see him, he looks like a bowling ball on on legs. <laughs> yep, he's he's that guy. Yeah, I, I'm. I hope we get to see him. Um, I, and of course, Jawan Hamilton. I'm excited. We talked to him on this program of, during the winter, I believe, right after National Signing Day, and we also talked to him at Media Day, Media Day on on the uh, overtime episode that we did and. And I like that kid, and I cannot wait to see what he can do. You know the uh, cliche that you see the biggest improvement on a team between week one and week two? Mm-hmm. And certainly that feels more applicable than ever to this UCF team. They're going to really assess what they get out of that week yeah. one. And then they've got that tough contest. And then you go up to the big house. In Michigan. But he, <laughs> it'll be interesting to see what, what happens with this depth chart. Injuries aside, yeah. after week one and the result that comes from that yeah. game. I think it's going to come down to which players are able to adjust and feel the most comfortable in that offense, know their assignments well, know where they have to be when they have to be there. That's what it's going to come down to. And it's it's going to be this, – this game, this whole week, feels like this giant science experiment, doesn't it? Mm. Like we're going to – like we're, okay, we're, it feels like – to make a really poor analogy, <laughs> it feels like – Poor analogy this, alert. This is, yeah, <laughs> this is what the guys uh, who worked on the Manhattan Project must have been feeling like in July 1945 before they is it actually... going to blow up and kill yeah, us? They, they, like, they, like, the guys on the UCFsports.com message are board turn green? are like, going to be taking bets as whether or not you know the, all of the oxygen in the atmosphere ignites or something like that. It, it's, uh, it just feels like, okay, we, we don't know what's going to yeah, happen. You know what? There's been so much anticipation, and we had Brandon Helwig of UCSports.com on last week. And the question, you see this thread every so often on the message board, oh, how, how's home? How are they? And he keeps saying, we can't see practice. We don't right. know. We have no so idea. So these countdowns, as we've been doing this countdown to the opening game, where we've had different guests on talking about the team, there's only so much you can talk about. We don't know a whole right. lot. We're going to ho- know a whole lot after three-plus hours at Bright House on First Frost. Are you even then we may, and even then we may not know. Are you guys wearing white to the yes. game? Yes, I bought a new white shirt yesterday when I was at it. Oh, no. I don't have Come any, on. I don't have anything white. Come on, I don't have I don't have a white shirt. There's white They're t-shirts the from one end of the stadium to the other. They have apparel shops in the stadium. Pick one up, man. Come on. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm not a white guy. Yeah, I mean, a white wearing. What was interesting? I am I'm white. I stopped by the bookstore guy. after yeah. between volleyball matches I, yesterday, yeah. and the the selection of white. Yeah, now somebody's going to think I'm not a racist. Lot. They don't have a lot of. So- <laughs> it's it's true. Although one thing I did see, I, I now I went. I stopped there on Saturday not a at the book. <laughs> at the we need a musical book. opening. Not for that. A racist. Well. Right. I stopped there at the. I stopped at the bookstore on Saturday between in between the two sessions of the volleyball matches because I was doing PA. Shameless plug, and um, and I took a look at the uh, the jerseys that are in there, and boy, those things are flying off the shelves, man. They can't keep them stacked. How about the there. disclaimer they have on the wall there on the window? Only one per. Only one, what do they care? Who buys them? You can only well, buy one. You can only buy one yeah, per. I, what do they care who visit? buys one of them? Well, That's just go there, buy one one day, and then just, come back three hours later like and a, buy another. It seemed like a silly uh, disclaimer. To well, he, hey, here's an idea. Well, isn't it great that there's that much demand that they have to do that? That's what I'm thinking. Speaking of white, right? First frost. The, uh, the the notes came out for the game, and the team is wearing white, white. the white uh, uniform. The white knights. What helmet is going to be with that, though? Mm. What they pants? didn't have that in the notes. It'll be a white jersey, but what helmet and what pants? Since oh. we have 635,000 combinations, <laughs> combinations that we could gray? wear. I, I hope to see the gray helmet, personally. Is that gray or anthracite? Anthracite, anthracite helmet. Anthracite? Yes. Oh, yeah, That's I'll the one that. I... Yeah, sure. I, or... Supposedly there's a black helmet, and we haven't seen that one yet. Supposedly, no, nah, we're saving that one for Black Friday. Yeah, you and you're in it. what section again for the games? Because we'll all be able to see the only person not wearing a white shirt. That's going to be you. Because no, you know how I our fan base is. There's going to be a lot be of easy to pick out. Our fan base is so good about that. Whenever they de- declare a color, some of this you can see where the frost, the white. They've got the blackout coming up. Yeah, Tulane, and then there's one. I think 
mixed colors, which is the one I think they'll do the best on. But then you see these other one is a vote. You vote for what color yeah. combination. One is certain people are supposed to wear black. I think it's, it's supposed ridiculous. to look like Listen, a moat. I don't, don't think knock we're it. gonna keep up with all of don't that. Don't knock it. This is what other schools do. Okay, a schools mix. that we want to be that we want to be in the crowd with, a mix? right? A mix so, like a moat. Did the, you see that one? Yeah, buy into it and let's do it. Come let's on, just, let's I'm just, wearing. I bought a white buy shirt. Into I'm it. Forty two dollars. I I'm bought not. a white shirt yesterday. No, nope. the dry fit ones. Trust me, I, I dropped some money to be. I didn't like any of the white. I have that all I my. Had, I so. still have all my old stuff that's all in all kinds of different colors too. I have, Ret- I have a stack of T-shirt. Yeah, they're kind Retro. of classic. They have the I'm Adidas not gonna logo do it. on them. Uh, they, they have like a stack of UCF t-shirts and all kinds of different colors. They got a little Conference colors. USA on there? They I mean, got maybe a little Mac on there I got my Fiesta. See, for the Anthracite Day, I got my, I got my Fiesta Bowl well, shirt on right here. That's there's got- a person on the message board that says we shouldn't be wearing anything Fiesta Bowl related. Yeah. I thought that Did was see a surprising that? Why not? <laughs> That's ridiculous. It's a sense of pride, isn't it? That, uh, Absolutely. We won the freaking Fiesta Bowl. It's not like it didn't happen. I, I saw it on TV and everything. When you're coming anyway. off of 0 and 12, Weren't, milk did, the accomplishments. Did you for go? As as didn't you go? I was at the Fiesta Bowl. Yeah, so, and I spent yeah. an awful lot of money on oh, my shirt at the end yeah. of the yeah, game. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you were a captive audience. That's I was, why. and there was enthusiasm <laughs> and okay, money to so, be spent there. So there you go. Wear whatever you want to wear. It's got to be white. Be just at to make the sure game. it's white. We my jersey has game. white numbers on it. No. There you go. My black jersey has white numbers on it. You can borrow my old Adidas white polo if you want. I have it for you. You'll never see me wear, I have white. I don't I'll wear white. white shirt. I don't wear white. Oh, it's going to be, it, I'm telling you, it's going to help you. It's going to be, be like 95 degrees out. It's like. Uh, You'll be all right. Colors Day is Friday, and you can wear any combination of black, it's gold, like, or white. You'll be uh, all right for that day, but Saturday, you got to wear white. It's like the, you know, the Cowboys that I'm gonna only tell, wear I'm going to tell the guys that I know me. up there who run the stadium cameras to find you in the stands and call you out on the video board. That's what it's Will like. the video board. Be completed by yes. them. They are working. They're working into the night. Yes, uh, to get that thing set. Uh, yeah, that thing will be. I, trust me, I, the, the guys I know over there who want that that thing is going to be done and ready. Now it's going to be. They're going to be crashing to make sure that they know how the whole thing works. Because let me tell you something, folks. That is a lot more complicated to figure out what to put where on these on these video boards because you can divide them into certain points and you have to have like a little banner on one side you know do we have the replay here a scoreboard here a little ad banner i, think down there. Be, I hope they have some the days to test they all have, that out yeah they're gonna they're gonna it's gonna be really tough god bless david Bielowski and all the guys at the ucf uh stadium video department for figuring all that out because it's gonna be tough but if anyone can do it those guys can do it i can't wait to see it by the end of the season when they really get it figured out and all yeah. the cool stuff they can do with it I'm also looking forward to my ears not getting blown away by the crappy <laughs> PA that used to that they used to have. Yeah, because they're changing the PA, aren't they? Yeah, it should be a a nice. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be a nice line array, and it will be a beautiful thing to uh, to fill the stadium. Were you a consultant with, uh, on this? Sounds no, like. but but I <laughs> sounded like it for 15 seconds. All of the new all of the new stadiums and all of the new things that they're doing are. I'm a an old, a concert touring guy over the years, and I've done that job. And and a few years ago, this technology came out called Line Array, mm-hmm. and it's it's kind of hard to explain, but but it's awesome. It's awesome, and you can put a PA at like the end of a of a field like that, and it covers everything perfectly. It's it's like in a line. It's kind of curved and you'll, you'll see i'm sure that's what it's going to be google it we'll figure it out it'll be google beautiful it. yeah google, google line array <laughs> before we bring on the south carolina state insider i, I am going to ask a prediction uh sell out uh, weather aside weather aside it's not uh, tropical storming or anything i've like heard that. rumors of it being a sellout i mean i i don't know if, if should there can, be I, it, coming off an 0 and 12 but with a new enthusiasm with a new coach and a new offense i think it should be. I think it should. I be. think it will come just short. I think student it'll... turnout strong on a Labor Day weekend. Turnout's going to be huge. Of course, yeah. on a student, holiday weekend. Student, student turnout's going to be. Yeah, huge. they're going to be there. Trust me. They've been like, they've been looking forward to this, especially the student the students who were on campus last year. Were look have been looking forward and to all it. the they new like this ones for a long wanting time. to come to a football yeah. game. I mean, you know, sellouts. <laughs> they've only had six right since the stadium opened yeah the way i look at sellouts i actually like to have space around me when i sit and watch the football game you're such oh, a contrarian and all, and all the you. people wearing white around you are going to want distance from you absolutely <laughs> folks <laughs> andrew shirt. fegley is on record saying i actually like it when ucf doesn't sell out is well, that what she wanted like, no no no, in with no. Her? you're being I'm negative. Just saying, you're being negative I'm not that's being why negative. this podcast that's... gets that no. <laughs> yeah yeah 
<laughs> okay, Bryden. Oh. Anyway. Um, he edits this, too, so we got to be yeah, careful. That may not be out. I'm not <laughs> editing that out. I can guarantee that. Because, anyway, we're not going to go there. But, anyway. Um, he likes a little leg room. Yeah, I like a little leg room. Little leg room. I, I don't it? like to be... We have an entire row, but I, I don't like, you know, to be... I don't like to be all... People, Did you have that problem at all last year? Not no. last year, but like <laughs> you didn't have that problem. The worst, at all. the worst time I remember it was South Carolina. That game was insane. Oh, packed in. Yeah, packed. that game was a, that game and was a madhouse. There were people that you know, have, I don't know. I've never been to a game. There were some South Carolina people in our section, which I have no idea how they got those tickets because. I sit in the faculty section, and any faculty member that would sell their tickets to the opposing team should be got to be something wrong with should that. Should lose oh. their tenure? Yes. <laughs> you want them fired? Yes. Identified. I'm not that. <laughs> At least identified. I'm not that harsh, but and put anyway. on the and put on the big video board. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So rate them poorly on rateMyProfessors.com. I I like to have <laughs> for lack of game attendance. Right. Lack of game. Maybe a little they leg room is all I'm saying. And parking is a lot easier. But it, so, it would be great. You you hope for a sellout, Jeff, but you don't think there will be. I, I think don't we'll think come there just will short. Be. I think we'll probably get like forty two thousand. Yeah. All right. Game game prediction. Oh, we're gonna win. I think we're gonna win. <laughs> I haven't seen a point spread or anything out, and I don't know that. I, I think we'll, I think one, we'll but... win. I, yeah, I haven't seen a I haven't seen a spread yet, so I can't say. But I think what's we'll... a fair spread for this game? An zero twelve team against uh, somebody needs to Google that. Well, well, they haven't released. I haven't seen them. Released oh, there's yet. something. Um, there's on, something. Oh, there's somebody gambling. Somebody's. Yeah, some, what some, they have some on, degenerate on, on the thing we talked they about. They were a gambling weeks ago. about <laughs> who was going to be brought, brought into, into the, the Big, Big Twelve. 12 yeah. So yeah. Well, uh, I think they win, but I don't know that it's going to be pretty at times. Right? Is that fair? That what we see may not be the prettiest. I'm thing. trying to Google a line on this game right now. I can't, okay, I can't, yeah, can't you see do that. Find, but um, so you say we're going to win? I think we win by at least double digits. Uh, I'm going to say thirty-one fourteen. As long as it's a win, does it matter? No, it doesn't matter if it's doesn't the matter to last me. second win, field goal. They win by one win point. Is that fr- concern you? Win the freaking game. Just win. Like that, like the poor kid all alone on that rainy night on ESPN holding up the sign said, <laughs> "Do it beat, for him. <laughs> beat somebody." I think that beat the somebody. offense is gonna like have everything going, and I think the the worlds and the planets are going to unite, and we're gonna win forty two to three. Woo! Oh my! That goodness. is my. I think the this offense is wow. gonna put up big numbers. That, by the way, no no line listed on any of the uh, okay. books according nice. to ESPN.com. It will be. It will be. I so what's a fair line 42, for this game. Three. You'd, you'd expect with one of these to see uh, double digits. If I, if I were a bookmaker, I would put it at about 17. I always 17. laugh about UCF, it. UCF minus 17. Andrew said that a couple weeks ago, who would bet on whatever it was? The if you are, to, you really need to examine game? your life choices. Yeah. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Because, <laughs> I I I I I'm going to say about 31-14. I think we're I think there are going to be times when we look like world beaters like oh my god this offense is amazing like we just went 80 yards in six plays in 12 seconds and then there's going to be times when it looks like a disaster because somebody missed an assignment or somebody you know so, someone made a wrong decision. It's just it's we're going to see manif- occasional manifestations of the growing pains. Okay? Back to what you said earlier. I don't think I can't remember now a game with as much anticipation. And not knowing what we're going to see, it's you been a usually long time. had a you had a concept of the O'Leary offense. You knew what you were yeah. expecting in terms of players, and, and this one there's a, a good bit of anticipation. It's been a long time. I, I haven't looked forward to a game, a UCF football game like this since the Fiesta Bowl. Really, I'm not only looking forward to the offense though. I'm really looking forward to seeing this three four defense, and that's a new thing. That's going to be the. It's a hybrid part. three four though as well. So I, I think that you're going to see a lot of interesting formations back there, and you know mm-hmm. some some really cool defense. You know, we're not going to stop the run like we did before. I don't believe, and that's people need to understand that. And and also about the offense, people need to understand. There's a lot more running in this offense in the Scott Frost offense than you think. That that's there right. Is. There's That's a right. Ton more. Everyone forgets that is that this is go back, go back and look at the Oregon film from the Marcus Mariota senior season. Well, look at the stats and see there that are, it's Oregon a rushing offense. Oregon led the rushing in college football for like six years in a row. It's rushing because of it and I short believe. passing. Yeah, 
and run as many plays as you possibly can in as little time as possible. And then there is, you know, some throwing down the field, yeah. obviously, but that's yeah. not all that it is. It's they, not an air raid offense. It's it's nothing like that. The whole idea is to is to keep the defense on its heels so much that, that they can't confused. that they're confused and they can't run any sorts of schemes. They have to play in their base because and stay in their lanes because it's the only thing they have time to think about actually doing. And so if you can figure that out, and if they can figure that out against, again, what is a pretty good defense with South Carolina State by FCS standards, this there's an opportunity to score a lot of points if all goes well and if all of our guys execute properly. Which I think makes the depth chart interesting again in that the only positioning group that doesn't have an or are the offensive linemen. Yep. That's good. Mm-hmm. Did you give your prediction, by the way? Because I don't remember here. Predicted it. UCF would win. Okay, you we all gave a, a score. More score. So you want a score? You're not uh, getting twenty six to thirteen. Okay. All right, twenty six thirteen. We should have written forty two to three yeah. for Andrew, and then I've got thirty one fourteen. Okay. All right. I think That's there will be good. some struggles. What are we? What are we putting down on this? <laughs> what are we uh, we're not a white t shirt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that just lent itself to that, huh? (laughs) Well, we're going to dig into South Carolina State uh, just ahead. Also, we're going to get into that debate that's been raging all week. Does George O'Leary really deserve a statue? Stay with us. There are so many ways to connect with the UCF Nightline Podcast. Check out our website at ucfnightlinepodcast.com for recruit spotlights, archived episodes, and more. You can like us on Facebook at Nightline Podcast. Talk with us on Twitter at UCF underscore Nightline. Listen whenever and wherever you are on YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iTunes, or tune in. Call us with your questions or comments at 407-205-7427. Go Knights! Charge on! Five questions with an insider. Getting to know this week's opponent. Let's dig a bit deeper into South Carolina State. We're joined now by the Bulldogs Media Relations Director, Kendrick Lewis. Kendrick, thanks so much for joining us on the Nightline Podcast. Thank you guys for having me. Talk a little bit about these 2016 Bulldogs coming off a 7-4 and four season, 6-2 and two in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Well, when you look at the Bulldogs from last season, uh, we, we're, we were definitely more talented on the defensive line. We, um, with the All-American Javon Hargrave and um, Reggie Owens and James Settles, you know, those guys are going to be truly missed. Um, you can't beat senior leadership, so we're going to be ex- extremely young this season uh, at those positions. Uh, right now, we had four guys that uh, that's not on the team anymore. They're only NFL rosters, uh, so it's going to it's, it's going to it's going to be an interesting year for the Bulldogs this year. So, tell us about the playmakers on offense and who could hurt the Knights. <laughs> Let's see. I mean, Caleb York. I mean, he's a true freshman. Last year, he threw for almost seventeen hundred yards, uh, eleven touchdowns. Uh, he, he's a, he's our returning starting quarterback. But we're a little young at running back. Uh, we're starting a freshman, Bishop Ford. True, true, our uh, true talent. Um, Scat back, uh, one of those backs, you know, that, that, that is, he's exciting to watch. Um, offensive line, returning some leadership with, um, Javaris Lehman. He's one of the top NFL prospects this year in the, in the MIAC conference, uh, 6'7, 310. He anchors the offensive line. So we're just going to have like a balanced attack this year. More, mainly we're more like a, a, a rushing offense. You know, we run the ball down your throat, but this year we're going to have a balanced attack. We're going to throw the ball a little bit, have some fun with it. And, and and see where it gets us. Hey Kendrick, the last time these two teams hooked up was back in 2008, and you guys held us to 17 points. That defense, I remember, was pretty good back then. Obviously, it was a long time ago. But what about the defense for the Bulldogs this year? Who stands out? Who's going to cause this offense some problems? You guys know anything about South Carolina State? Our defense, I mean, has been our bread and butter throughout our, throughout our years. Um, we returned two uh, All Americans and. Um, uh, Deshaun Taylor, linebacker, and uh, Darius Leonard. He's the preseason MEAC defense player of the year. Uh, he's definitely uh, a talent to watch. Uh, he can get after you. Um, the defensive line is going to be where we're going to kind of be a little, have problems at. They're young, but they're talented. Uh, they're true freshmen. Um, we call him Shaq. He's 6'5", 390. Um, and you got um, Paul McIver. You got um, some of those names. So, so those guys are going to really have to step up a little bit this year. Uh, we're experiencing secondary a little bit, you know. Philip Henry's back, uh, Marquise Jones. The defense is going to do its part. 
Definitely. And so we're just looking forward to get after you guys. You know, while UCF has a new head coach for the first time in more than a decade, this will be the 15th season for the Bulldogs head coach, Buddy Pugh. What kind of coach <laughs> is he? Tell us more about the talent the program is sending to the NFL. Coach is a player's coach, if I, can, if I must say. He's tough on those guys. He loves to recruit in the state of South Carolina. He loves to keep talent here. If Clemson and Carolina don't get him, he wants to be that, that third guy to get, get all the talent. Um, He's a hard-nosed coach. He's old school. <laughs> Out of the 16 championships that we have, I think he's a part of about 15 of them. As a player, a coach, he's definitely uh, one of those coaches that uh, he sticks with his players. He, he's loyal to his players. If, if, if you carried him to the promised land before, he's going he's gonna to ride with you. So he's one of those hard-nosed coaches that, that, that definitely uh, loves the challenge. So that's why he schedules these big games with you guys, Central Florida, uh, Louisiana Tech, Clemson. That way it prepares us for conference time. Well, speaking about that schedule, the Bulldogs open with four straight road games, including the opener at UCF, then Louisiana Tech, Clemson, and Florida A&M. How does uh, South Carolina State survive that tough slate? <laughs> Let's just hope we come out healthy and on top by the time we get to Florida A&M. <laughs> That's the biggest key. Uh, we had a great preseason camp. Uh, came out on top. No guys, no major injuries. Uh, we're, we're very, very young at, at a lot of positions. Uh and the key for us this season is getting some of these young guys in for those those big games. So by the time conference time comes, they, they'll be able to play and, pro- and help us produce and possibly win the MIAC again. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. We're looking forward to a good game. And, of course, we need to get back on the winning track here. So <laughs> it's uh, it will be a, an interesting game for sure. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you guys for having me. And good luck. Go Bulldogs. Don't forget, Saturday marks the debut of UCF's new clear bag policy. Keep it clear, keep it small, or it is not getting in. Does that pretty much summarize that multi-page? Women may uh, carry a small clutch, though. What if you're funny here? I have a question. What if you're a guy? Can you bring a clutch in? I'm sure you probably could. It's equal, isn't it? Aren't we all being tolerant of everything and whatever? But probably allow for some more time to get in to the yeah. in game yeah, because it's of a, this policy. Because yeah, you cause, might have to walk back to your car because, to put your crap back. Because unfortunately, not everyone listens to this podcast, only a significant number of fans. So so someone eventually won't get the word, and it's that guy who's going to hold up the line. Well, it's that guy that's going to mess everything up anyway. And that yeah. guy's going to be wearing that a guy, non-white shirt, bet you Because too. that, that guy. guy doesn't listen to this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so that guy's a big, huge jerk. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, find us on Facebook and Twitter. Don't be that guy. (laughs) Speaking of uh, media-related things, the debut of UCF Night Talk live radio show happens Wednesday, August 31, 7 o'clock. Locals can watch in person at the new Caddyshanks out by UCF. Everyone else can tune in via the iHeart app or via FM 96.9 or AM 740. For this week, at least, you get Scott Frost there in person. They don't promise him every week in that media release. So uh, we'll see who... Uh, else they bring, but uh, you get Scott Frost breaking down the X's and O's. Did you get your game. subscription to UCF Knights TV yet? I have not gotten that. I did. Did you? I did, yeah. yeah. And? Yes. and? It's pretty cool. I mean, it's all, all that it's got on there is, it's got, it, the other day they played the volleyball game. Yep. Um, and there's some interviews from soccer and some interviews from they did the volleyball press conference was on there and all that stuff. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, Seven ninety nine a, a month. Yeah, I'm a cord cutter, so I'm looking forward to when they launch the Roku app because that's the that's the device that I use on my TVs in my You're house. You're an Apple guy, and you don't have an Apple TV. I do have an Apple TV, but Apple TV. Uh, I have an old Apple TV. Oh yeah, yeah. You got to get a new I, one. Not, too. I, I, well, I mean, you can get all the same stuff on a Roku, and actually, I like the Roku a lot because it's. Uh, but anyway, I'm looking forward to when they get the when they get the new Roku app to them. Then, then I can get all my UCF stuff on my big 55 inch TV in my living room, much to my wife's chagrin. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Seven ninety nine a month gets you the extras. So there. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, it's it looks pretty cool. I I was. I signed up for it and got it as fast as I could. So just... they didn't really launch it with a lot of fanfare, though. They did. They? I think no, they made it kind it was... of soft launching yeah, it this it, week. Well, well, yeah. I mean, when they started it, basically the week that you know they, this that everything started. So it's. I think they. It may have been a little bit, a little bit late. I think they would have liked to have launched it with all the apps, the Apple mm-hmm. TV app, the Roku app at the same time. Um, and they're not ready just yet, but it should. It's going to take a little bit of time, but it'll be it'll be done in, in due time. What's happening this week? Let's look at your night's plan. Our volleyball hits the road for the Southern Illinois Invitational, playing Southern Illinois Friday, September 2. 
then northern Arizona and western Michigan. That's quite the field. On Saturday, September 3, women's soccer also on the road at Oklahoma State, Friday, September 2. Stetson on Sunday, September 4, first kick in DeLand, 7.30 that night. Men's soccer continues the road start to its season at Charlotte, Friday, September 2. And cross country, boy, they have the best road trip of them all at Hawaii, Saturday, September 3. How about running cross country in Hawaii? Sign me up for that, be beautiful. man. Yeah, be oh, beautiful. Oh, man. I envy those kids. Well, Not a whole lot of elevation change, probably, but maybe a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Yeah, right. Maybe a little bit. So there's other stuff in the news this week. There's a report that there possibly could be a George O'Leary statue coming up, uh, and it's it's making him cough right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Are you expressing um, your opinion I'm right already, now? Was that, a, a was that a gag? <laughs> or? I got something in my throat. Uh, all right. Well, not officially announced, but reports indicating that some uh, deep pocket donors, of which there are not too many connected with UCF, but right. those that are, uh, there's a pocket of them that really like the work product of George O'Leary over a decade plus at UCF. And uh, that prompted uh, Andrew's good buddy, Twitter uh, friend, uh, text friend, uh, Dennis Don, <laughs> <of> CBSSports.com, <laughs> to write the article, Building a Monument to Insensitivity, UCF Plans George O'Leary Statue. Who didn't reply to me after asking if, if he would like to redo his interview after <laughs> that Where he was uh, a little more positive on us yeah, two weeks ago. Yeah. So after all the talk on this, and there was a, a meltdown on the message board uh, <laughs> about <laughs> put this. put it lightly. Well, yeah, I mean, it was a thread that got a lot of interest. I guess uh, to kind of wrap it up here at, at, at the end of the week uh, what's your take on this should uh, should george o'leary have a statue yes i think that he should have a statue i don't think now is the time to do it i don't think now is the time to announce this and it was i think announced through not officially through ucf maybe somebody leaked something to somebody and that's how this got out i think that he should have a statue or something i i, I think maybe the football field you know George O'Leary Field at Bright House Stadium or something like that would be more appropriate. Not enough time a has statue. passed. Yeah. Scott uh, Frost hasn't even coached his first game when there was talk of this. Right. And the fact that there's a lot of division amongst the fan base. You know, if you ask fans, does George O'Leary know that he contributed to the program? George O'Leary will answer yes, right? Yeah. Does, if you ask George O'Leary, are there people that supported you? He knows that there are. If you ask George O'Leary, are there people that were not your biggest fans? He would say the same. T- you know, right. he would say, yeah, this is a bit self-serving on the part of these donors to release this now. And I wonder, you know, it said UCF, th- th- this may have UCF's blessing, right? I think this is a little bit of a bungle by Danny White, athletic director Danny White. Why, why couldn't you control this and say, hey, we want to bring George back. We want to thank him. We want to have him on the field. But, hey, maybe not in the lead-up to first frost, yeah. you know? I, well, it's important to remember, and, and this is something that Eric Lopez and I spoke about on another fine UCF-related fi- uh, podcast called the Black and Gold Banneret <laughs> Podcast, a plug. which you can find <laughs> on blackandgoldbanneret.com, that uh, remember that this was, th- this was not an announcement by the university, and the university did not want this coming out, okay? Remember, it's the donors who, like, we, like you said, Love them some George O'Leary. And they're old-time fine. football guys. Who now remember there was a li- the the way this whole played out. La- this whole thing played out last week. George shows up at the Jacksonville Jaguars practice. Talks with Blake Bortles. There was a picture of him out there. Oh look who showed up at the Jaguars po- at the Jaguars practice. A uh, couple days later, story comes out. Hey, what's George O'Leary up to these days? And uh, I for- I forget if it was Shannon Owens Green at the Sentinel or if it was somebody else who wrote the story. Um, just catching up with him, you know, what's he been up to, you know, as he, he's, you know, he, he's into, I don't know, paddle boarding or something. I forget, but I still um, can't picture that. Can you, can you picture I, him out there? I, paddle boarding? I don't want to picture it. That's the <laughs> difference. Anyway. Um, and then all of a sudden the follow-up story comes up and I think what happened was they went to talk to some donors about, you know, Hey, what do you think about George? Now, oh, you know, we're going to put a statue up. Eventually, we're getting the money together to do it, and then that's the new story in the in the in the follow up a couple of days later. And now, what we're, we're talking about is two different questions, right? The first question is: Does George O'Leary deserve commemoration to his service to the football program in some form at at UCF? It say in a statue. In my opinion, and I've said this, yes, okay. But the second question is: Should this have come out when it did? And the answer is no. Whichever donor leaked this out made a mistake, in my opinion. 
because it takes a little bit of the shine off of Scott Frost and the new debut of UCF. And as we've seen from the reaction to the Dennis Dodd story that you guys mentioned, there is division within the fan base of UCF about whether or not George O'Leary should have a statue or some other type of commemoration. And that's just within our fan base. Never mind the, the other fan bases who also happen to read columns by Dennis Dodd of CBS. So it's easy for us to crap on Dennis Dodd for, for writing the article and calling Eric Planter's lawyer and all that. But I think that the it's okay. Now, this is the, me, the journalist speaking. It's okay to put that other point of view out there that says, hey, maybe we this maybe this isn't such a good idea. And then let the chips fall where they may. If the, if it wasn't, if it ends up being not being a good idea, guess what? It's not going to happen because they're going to have to get the piece of land around the stadium. They're to still going to the need UCF's up. permission to. Yeah, do they're going to need. The, That's the part I just wish UCF could have managed better. That we want to honor and recognize George O'Leary for his contributions to the program in the right time, in the right way, and it seemed that that an, Leak, and I should say leak, not announcement, because certainly there's been no UCF related press release. Well, we release don't about know that. who leaked it, but chances are it's not someone in the athletic department because they wouldn't let something like that get out. It would be a it would be a donor who's a George O'Leary fan, and they're not in the athletic department. They're an independent person. I have a quick question here. What about the Don Jonas or the Gene McDowell statues? Wow. When are those coming? Eric and I talked about that, too. Because and I think you're not going to see a Gene McDowell statue as long as Dr. John Hitt is president uh, of the right. university. Well, the that, you want to talk about messy departures? Yeah. Well, Don Jonas started the, the football thing at UCF. He was the first head coach. Mm-hmm. You would think that maybe they would honor... You know, well, some, you know, maybe not Gene McDowell, but if you look at Gene McDowell's record, the his his was, record was yeah. you know not a lot better, but quite a bit better than than uh, George O'Leary's, and he was also there for thirteen seasons instead of eleven you, seasons. You know, you yeah. point to something that I think is interesting: is that some of the departures that UCF has had, Kirk Spearaw being fired after seventeen seasons, yep. the uh, very poor way Jay Bergman left the baseball program uh, amidst some controversy and scandal. We don't have a lot of people to hold on to from the past. Mm-hmm. And well, we don't have very much of a past. Not much of a past, but the people that <laughs> were instrumental in that. But the people that were instrumental in that, the Gene McDowells, the Kirk Spearaws, the Jay Bergmans, yeah. have no association with the program in any way. Yeah, and that's the unfortunate thing about that. Well, I mean, we, we saw... I was talking with somebody this week about it. Remember when we were playing in the old arena, they, they named the floor after Torchy Clark. And then when they and then when the new arena got built, the floor was not named after Torchy Clark. Well, what happened there? Mm. And uh, and and that's what I you know. That, and if there that's was sort anybody of that, of that that needed to be recognized for contributions, Clark. was Torchy Clark. Yeah, and uh, I would like us to do those kinds of things. Now here we are making a shopping list of things we want Danny White to eventually correct. <laughs> give him just give it some time. Give him guys. a couple more months. Give him a couple more months on the job to figure all this stuff out. You know, he's he's only he's barely moved into his house for crying out loud. Um, yeah, I mean, I get the consternation, but I, I'm like, I don't think well, this whole thing with the statue sort of stepped on what was a pretty positive bump in yeah. news. The big donation to UCF athletics winter Springs resident, John Juliano has pledged $1.5 million towards a $3 million upgrade at the UCF baseball complex. It would be known as John Juliano Park. By the way, I don't know what that means for Jay Bergman Field uh, at that point. Well, maybe it's Jay Bergman, Jay Bergman Field, Field at, at John, John Juliano, Juliano Park. Park. Yeah. Scheduled to be finished by the start of the 2018 season if they get $1.5 million matched to that right. donation. Upgrades would include a 300-seat premium club, improved audio, clubhouse enhancements. and Does that include a new scoreboard, I wonder? Because they need a new scoreboard. They do need there. a new scoreboard. They should move the old... Anyway. Yeah. They need a lot well, of things they, right there. Yeah, there's a lot of things that need to be done. Obviously, the, the if you look at the renderings that were released, they it's the renovation is not as ambitious as they had hoped several years ago when they released some other renderings. For example, what they're going to do is they're based on what I've seen, they're going to build around the current press box. There were hopes that they would knock down the old press box and build a new one, uh, but they're they're just going to keep the structure there and upgrade it. Uh, get the boxes up above it, build some extra seating. Um, I would love to see them fill out down the left field line, do the same thing that they did with the extra bleachers that we see down the right field line so that we can host an NCAA regional at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, that's a number of things on the wish list that you know they got to get the money to do. And, 
and they're and still you in the process about the of doing first that. renderings they released that some years ago and none of that ever came to be so right. now there's still 1. a sign 5. out in front of the park that has yeah. those renderings up there too so we'll see if um, if fans and donors step up to match that 1.5 million dollars so they can move forward with that project so so the bow on the george o'leary is consensus amongst us yes he deserves a statue for his contributions to the program but the timing stunk yes if the this, timing was uh, awful and release uh, you know can't get out of our own way this is why nice we things. can't have nice things <laughs> well it's uh andrew's favorite part of the nightline podcast uh it the question is uh, what's going on with the big 12 <laughs> as the world turns no. yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, you know, there's something that's... Uh, Are we well, in yet? Are we in yet? I don't really have... We're not in let's yet. Check Hold on. Our, let's check that Twitter account. Our, is UCF in the P5 let's yet? Let's see what Scott no. Frost has... Yeah, Hold, on. <laughs> Hold on one second. Let's see what Scott Frost has to say about this. Our team hasn't talked about it one time. We're not going to talk about it. Yeah, All right, so thanks for that. That's what uh, Scott Frost has to say about that. Well, who had something more to say about it was the Dallas Morning News who said that the Big 12 has completed 20... Video interviews with all of the perspective. Oh, now it's candidates. 20. It's, it's up to 20. 20. 20. Yeah, it's wow. 20. Every time apparently we talk there about was it, one it school that was. Two. Apparently there was one school that was on the list that didn't know that they were on the list. <laughs> <laughs> they dialed <laughs> them up on Skype. Right. Hey, what, what do you? Are got you to, ready? Yeah. What hey, do you got to contribute? You guys got what? We. Th- <laughs> are you sure? Well, do you do any college research football at has your started? Institution. Yeah. The, the rumor, you know, the release was that the Big Twelve wanted to have some decisions uh, announced before the start of the. The season and the season is now Ain't starting and it's uh, now upon us. Yeah, so at least it would look like they're going to start their narrowing down, which I think might get rid of Tulane. I don't know. <laughs> might it might huh? mean Tulane's out? I don't know. Well, uh, d- the date that I had circled was uh, that Houston Oklahoma game, which was when the Big Twelve meeting was when yeah, which which may or may which is in Dallas, I believe, and and may or may not be. A good time and to announce something if maybe Houston was getting into the league. On the other hand, see, this is the thing. The Big 12 just loves stringing this out because the more they get their name out there, the better it is for them. And it would not surprise me one bit if eventually they announced, well, A, it would not surprise me at all if they said, yeah, we're not going to expand at all. And then B, it would not surprise me if they said, Oh, we're going to expand by two with an option for another two. We're going to take another year to evaluate. And then they're going to, and then we're going to be right back to where we were, where we have been this entire time speculating about who are going to be the next two teams to get into the Big 12. And then they can take up more column inches and more clicks and hopefully more podcast downloads. And but Scott Frost, he's not going to change his tune on that. <laughs> good for him. The only people who know about this is the presidents anyway, and the comptrollers of the university, like you were saying earlier to me, Trace. But, uh, yeah, I uh, think the money people are part of that yeah. conversation. But I, I, I just, I hate this story so much. I, I want to punch the story in I the face too. if I could. Yeah. Because it's, this is the dumbest story in sports, this, the way this is getting strung out. And it goes back to something that I wrote on my fine website, blackandgoldbanneret.com. There's, <laughs> There's a plug. There's a plug. The way they're running this, the way the Big 12 is running this whole show, makes me seriously question whether or not I want UCF to be a, a part of a league that does business the way this way. Mm. Speaking of Big 12, um, we're focused on our game, obviously, on Saturday. Oklahoma against Houston is a pretty good game. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking weekend, forward to that That's game. a pretty good game. That's going to be a, you, a good one. I hope. Do you root for Houston? Yes. Absolutely yes. not. Yes. Absolutely Raise the profile you know, I, of, the, I normally, of the conference. I normally am pro rooting for the American nope. teams except South Florida. But now, with this expansion nope. stuff going on, nope. mm, I don't know that I want Houston no, to win I, that game. I'm, I'm rooting full on for Oklahoma. Yeah, I don't know that I want Houston to win Go that game. Go Sooners. Do That's they need a little more? Kansas grad right yep. there. Well, but do they need a little more boost? Does Houston really need coming I, off their season in which they beat Florida State and they had the great year? To go out and knock Listen, off Oklahoma? The Big 12 is not going to suddenly decide, oh, sure, let's invite Houston because they happen to no, be no, no. Oklahoma on Saturday. That's you don't why. want to give them another thing that's, that's a positive. That's not going to affect their decision. So as far as I'm concerned, yeah. I'm looking at I'm how does you, it help UCF this year? What helps UCF this year? 
every other team in the American going undefeated outside of conference. That's what I'm looking at. Yeah, I'm very bring, short-sighted. I can't like bring that. myself to that one I right think now. it would help if, if Houston got thumped. So, it, so No, if they beat Oklahoma and we beat them, we look well, better. It's yes, a long time until we beat As far as them. that goes. But if, if they got thumped and then they, they keep on getting thumped maybe by a couple other teams because they're, you know, they're upset. They got beat by, you know what I'm saying? They have a down uh, little time in their in their season. Maybe that'll help us out in the long run. Uh, I don't know. You know, back I mean, on Big 12, speaking of A record of is a record. You know what I'm saying? I hear you. It but still I, counts against I, their, but, their but record. In, but in a world where we have to figure out, you know, strength of schedule and all that, I want them to beat Oklahoma by 50 points and then us beat them by 50 points. Well, that That's would, what I want. That would be nice, yes. But. Another interesting first-week matchup is Notre Dame against Texas. And Texas and Charlie Strong are on record saying, maybe we don't need all of this Big 12 expansion if Texas <laughs> is a strong national player again. If Notre Dame, that's a, sort of a knockout game a little bit early on, a little bit. Uh, Notre maybe, Dame, I don't know. There, but I don't if think Texas, Texas loses, is going to be a contender this year anyway. But that's Texas's point is, if we're strong, maybe we don't need all this other stuff. So yeah. if Texas loses to Notre Dame in week one, maybe the Texas talk kind of subsides a bit. I, I, I despise the University I think, of Texas. I think Charlie Strong is a bit off more than he can chew there with Texas, personally. We'll I'm, not sleep, I'm not sleeping on that, on that school just yet. Yeah. This, I, I think this could be a big year for them. Could we'll be. see. Knights in the NFL. Storm <laughs> Johnson, two carries, minus five yards, a fumble, and a cut. Storm. Cut by the Bucks Sunday. Oh, jeez. I mean, it, well, well, I mean. Clayton Gethers getting back onto the field finally. Good for him. Um, after a foot injury, yep. Brashad Perriman finally back on the field for the Ravens after uh, tearing his ACL last year. In OTAs, in the very beginning, never even saw preseason action. I did not get to see that game the other day. I believe they played Detroit, but I'm sure that he was able to get in there, possibly. I would it's, think that uh, they would want him in there. It's put up or shut up time for him over in Baltimore, because they're already thinking, man, did we did, did we draft a bust here with Prashad? I, I, I don't think he's going to be a bust, but I don't think he's so, but he's got to get on the field. Yeah. The number one most important factor in, in your NFL ability is availability. Well, and then also, you start thinking about that with Rennell Hall now, unfortunately, because yeah, done. of done his for the yeah, broken fibula. That doesn't help him at all. That was such Browns. a... I don't think that they've released him or anything. No, but, but he would have had a shot to make a real good shot oh, absolutely. to make the team. Yeah. Can you imagine RG3 throwing to, to uh, Rennell him? Hall? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, well, he looked pretty good throwing to Josh Gordon the yeah. other day. So. Yep. Correct me if I'm wrong on this as, as we're talking about Perryman. Is UCF's last win in football not yes. that uh, Hail Perryman? It is. That's I guess he's Carolina that yep. oh, my UCF's goodness. last football win. That he was a long the time ago. Game. Yep. Yeah, I was at that game. That was it feels like a long time ago, and yet it doesn't, doesn't it? I don't know. Uh, well, he hasn't played feels, much since. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it feels like a very since. long. I don't know. Time I got ago. a toddler, so all of a sudden, you know, time starts flying real right. quick. I understand that. <laughs> all right, so on to news and notes. And now, news and notes from the world of UCF sports. Women's soccer gets its first win of the season, a 4-0 victory over UMass. By the way, win number 100 for Tiffany roberts Sahadak career. Congratulations to Put her on that. Aside there. Volleyball goes 3-1 and one to win the UCF Invitational to start the 2016 season. That included a three-set loss, but a very tough and close three-set loss to Florida State. Uh, UCF defeated Stony Brook, Kent State, and Stetson. Our old friends from Stetson. Well, friends, enemies, I don't know. Jayla Hervey was named tournament MVP. Kia Bright and Ann Richards also named to the all-tournament team. The Knights are 3-1 and one to start the year. You act like you know something about that after PA announcing eight <laughs> games. Was it eight games? Seven matches. Seven yes. matches. Yeah. Jeez. Men's soccer dropped its opener on the road 4-2 at Grand Canyon. Freshman Richard Amon had both of the Knights' goals. Track and field wants you. Interested students are invited to an open tryout on September 14th at 4 p.m. at the UCF Track and Field Complex. Got Do any they, eligibility left there? I anybody? don't. Yeah. Do they want me? <laughs> well, I mean, well, I, you got know, any eligibility? I can come back. I can go get it. I can. Yeah, <laughs> Probably, I still have eligibility I, left. I don't know. I, I, I used my four. Anyway, <laughs> awesome. Well, this time next week we will be talking about. A Hopefully a UCF win with Kyle Israel in studio live on Facebook at 7 p.m. 
September 4th. How else can they listen? Is it just uh, Facebook? Or? It's going to be on, just on Facebook this just time. Just on Facebook. Yeah. I haven't figured out, with Facebook, I haven't figured out how to do multiple things. So with we're just going to do this one on Facebook. Uh, and then, of course, after the Michigan game, I will be doing a live call-in show, uh, the post-game show on Rabble.tv at approximately 3.15. And you can call in and talk to me about what your thoughts were on the Michigan game. And uh, that will be very cool. I'm looking forward to that. Rabble.tv. Mm. One step at a time. Let's just knock Let's this first that. one out. Let's get, yeah. Let's get this first one out of the yep. way. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Jeff. Thank you guys uh, for hey, having me. Hey, how about a plug me. again? What do you do? <laughs> uh, you can catch my work at blackandgoldbanneret.com, where we also have a podcast. Uh, we have Eric Lopez and I. And I want to thank you guys for allowing me to encroach upon this podcast as well, because I, you know, how much I enjoy you guys and and the work that you do on this podcast. So thank you so much for having me, and uh, it's been fun. Let's do it again sometime. Well, right. We absolutely enjoy you being here. So this has been episode number seventy eight for the UCF Nightline Podcast. I'm Andrew Fegley. I'm Trace Trolko. Go Knights! Charge on! Charge on! <laughs> Spirits will never yield. Black and gold shines right through the light. Victory is our cry. BSCTO, our life tonight. Our nights will shine.